Hi everyone, in this lecture we will be talking about DNA replication. Next, let's talk about what DNA replication is. This is the creation of a new strand of DNA from existing template strands. All cells use this mechanism of replication which we call a semi-conservative replication. And here at the bottom, we can see a figure representing that. The replicated strand is composed of an old strand or the original strand, which we call the template strand, and a new strand which is built on top of the template strand. So in this figure, we can see the original double-stranded DNA dividing into two template strands and the new strand being created based on the sequence of the old template strand. Next, let's talk about where DNA replication occurs. In eukaryotes, this occurs in the nucleus. Meanwhile, in prokaryotes, DNA replication occurs in the cytoplasm. Our DNA replication starts at our replication origins, which are specialized sequences of DNA that are used by various proteins to open up the DNA and begin our replication. Once the origin of replication has been opened up, it creates two replication forks, one here and one on this side as well. The cell is actually very efficient in its DNA replication, and this is because of two things. First, replication is actually bidirectional. So once a replication fork opens, replication occurs in two opposing directions. Next, there are actually numerous replication forks present in animal cells, and these replication forks continue to create new DNA and they meet together, as we can see in this figure. In humans, there are around 10,000 of these different replication forks that can occur at the same time. The speed of replication can also differ between different organisms. For example, in bacteria, there can be as much as 1,000 nucleotide pairs per second being added to our template DNA. While in humans, it is not as fast at 100 nucleotide pairs per second. Next, let's talk about the different proteins involved in DNA replication. The first and most important of these proteins is called DNA polymerase 3. The job of this protein is to add nucleotides to the three prime end of a growing DNA strand. And the way it does this is by using the complementary base pairs to detect and select the nucleotides to be added. The nucleotides come from a compound that is freely floating in the nucleus, which we call deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate. Now these complementary base pairs were discussed in a previous lecture, and these are cytosine and guanine, and adenine and thymine. In this figure, we can see how DNA polymerase 3 creates a new strand of DNA based on the template strand. First, it takes a nucleoside triphosphate that is freely floating in the nucleus, and it makes sure that it is complementary to the template strand. Once it does this, it breaks off the two phosphates that we can see here and removes them. These are what we call pyrophosphates, and these can actually be used in a variety of molecular biology techniques. And it then takes the nucleotide and attaches the 5' prime phosphate end to the 3' prime hydroxyl end of the new strand. This is what we call our phosphodiester bond. Because of this, we have to take note that the creation of a new strand of DNA only occurs in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction. The fixed direction of DNA replication poses a problem at the replication fork, because while one strand is read in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction, the other template strand is read in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. So this leads to the creation of two different new strands. We call this as asymmetric replication. The first strand, which is being created on the 3' prime to 5' prime template strand, is known as the leading strand. This means that it grows in the normal 5' prime to 3' prime direction, which we can see here. This is what we call continuous growth. On the opposite side, we have the lagging strand, which grows in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. But because DNA can only be created in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, this strand undergoes discontinuous growth. This means that it grows in fragments, which we call Okazaki fragments. Next, let's talk about a very important function of DNA polymerase, and this is its self-correcting ability. 
This allows DNA polymerase to have a very low error rate, around one error per 10 to the seventh nucleotide pairs copied. It needs to have this very small error rate because changes in the DNA can have profound effects on the cell. Here are the different ways that the DNA polymerase avoids error. First is the monitoring of the base pairing. The DNA polymerase makes sure that the bases are complementary before it catalyzes the reaction to create the phosphodiester bond that links our different nucleotides. Again, these complementary base pairings are cytosine and guanine and adenine and thymine. Next, it also has a proofreading ability. This means that the previous base pair has to be checked before it can add a new base pair. And in this figure, we can see that proofreading ability at work. So here we can see the base that is about to be added, but before it can be added, the DNA polymerase has to check the previous base pairs if they are correct. If it is correct, then the DNA polymerase can proceed, but if it is not correct, the DNA polymerase has to correct this mistake first before adding the new base to our DNA. This proofreading ability can only occur in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This is another reason why DNA replication only happens in one direction. The next protein involved in DNA replication is called primase. This is a specialized RNA or ribonucleic acid polymerase. This means that instead of creating DNA, it creates RNA. The specific RNA that it creates is called an RNA primer, and this primer acts as the starting point for new DNA. This is because DNA polymerase cannot start a DNA strand on its own. It needs to have a starting point. So this is the job of your RNA primer. Usually, RNA primers are around 10 base pairs long. Now, in your leading strand, there is usually only one primer being created. But in the lagging strand, the primase is highly active, creating primers at each Okazaki fragment. Next, we also have other proteins involved in DNA replication, and most of these are very active in the lagging strand. First, we have DNA polymerase 1, also known as repair polymerase. Its job is to remove the RNA primers and replace them with DNA, and this occurs in the different Okazaki fragments, which we can see in this figure. So here we have two Okazaki fragments, and they both start with our RNA primers. RNA polymerase 1 removes these primers and fills in the gap with DNA. But there is still a cut in between these two fragments. So the next protein, DNA ligase, joins the 5' prime phosphate end of one DNA fragment to the adjacent 3' prime hydroxyl end. Here, we can see that these two fragments are then connected by DNA ligase, creating one whole new DNA. We also have other proteins involved in DNA replication, which we will discuss briefly in this slide. First, we have DNA helicase, which uses ATP hydrolysis to move forward and unzip the double-stranded template DNA. They start at the replication origins and are responsible for progressing the replication fork. Next, we have single-strand DNA binding proteins, and their job is to attach to the unzipped template DNA to prevent reforming. This is because once DNA has been unzipped, it has the tendency to go back to its original template strand because they are complementary to each other. So the job of this protein is to keep the template elongated and separated from one another. Next, we also have sliding clamps, whose job it is to keep DNA polymerase attached to the template, and finally, the clamp loader, which assembles the sliding clamps around the DNA. Now in this figure, we can see all the different proteins involved in the replication fork. On the leading strand, we can see that there are only a few proteins actively involved, and these are the sliding clamp and the DNA polymerase, which is creating the new strand in the correct 5' prime to 3' prime direction. On the lagging strand, we can see a variety of proteins that are active. First, we have DNA helicase, followed by primase. We also have the single-strand DNA binding protein, and of course, the DNA polymerase and its sliding clamp. Now, in this figure, we can see that all of these proteins are far apart from one another. But in reality, all of these proteins are held together in a large multi-enzyme complex that we can see in this figure here. 
we can see that they are all concentrated here at the replication fork. Let's next talk about another protein which is very important to DNA replication and this is DNA topoisomerase. As DNA helicase unwinds the protein, Next, let's talk about telomeres and telomerases. Let's first take note that the ends of the lagging strand actually become shorter after each replication. This is because the end of the strand is actually not DNA, but an RNA primer. So once this is removed, there is no longer any place for our DNA polymerase to start the creation of a new strand of DNA. This is where our telomeres come into play. These are repeating sequences found at the ends of our chromosome, which means they do not have a protein coding function. So they act as buffers. In cases where there is a gap left by the removal of RNA, and this happens at the end of the DNA, it doesn't really matter to the cell because these areas do not code for any proteins. But in some cases, the telomeres become extremely short, and so they need to be replenished. And this is the job of the telomerase. The telomerase has two main functions. First, it can act as a primer at the end of the lagging strand. So it can actually act as the starting point for the creation of the new strand of DNA, which was missing. And at the same time, it can also replenish the telomeres, as we can see in this figure. This ensures that there is enough telomeres in order to keep the replication going as many times as possible. Thank you very much for listening. If you found this video informative, please consider subscribing to our channel. And make sure to comment below for other topics which you would like to hear discussed.